I'm standing in the historical museum of Bosnia in Sarajevo, uh, a city that was devastated by a war 20 years ago. The city has almost uh, fully recovered after the war, but uh, a lot of people were traumatized and became drug dependent. Several NGOs are providing services for these people, uh, but uh, these services, which were previously funded by the Global Fund to fight AIDS, tuberculosis and malaria, recently uh, lost their funding because the Global Fund is leaving the country. There are concerns that if uh, the government does not provide uh, funding for these programs, then the country can experience the same outbreak of uh, HIV and hepatitis, which, for example, Romania experienced a few years ago. PROI is the NGO that operated the first and only program in Sarajevo that distributed clean needles to people who inject drugs to prevent infections. It was funded by the Global Fund. Samir Ibizevic, the head of the NGO, told us that they had to close down the outreach and the dropping center. Of course, it was a big uh, disappointment in terms of breaking these ties, because it's 10 years, it's a long time. As a result, we, we see many people get recovered, uh, their families uh, finally unify with, with them. At the same time, we reach many people who, uh, who didn't want to go for go drug-free. We provide them with, uh, with harm reduction services, with needles, syringes. I believe that we prevent many deaths, we prevent many diseases. Some drop-in centers in the country are still open. We visited the drop-in center of the NGO Margina in Zenica, an industrial town near Sarajevo. This center provides social and health support for drug users, including clean needles and syringes to prevent HIV and hepatitis C infections. This is one of the centers that have lost their funding from Global Fund, so now they are struggling to survive. Unlike in Sarajevo, the town of Zenica provided a free rental site for the organization so they could stay open. The head of the center, Denis Dedaic, told us that the center shares a building with an unusual neighbor, a kindergarten. For all this year we don't have any problem uh, and incident with uh, regarding the, the, the kids and the, uh, our clients. Our services it's uh, free of charge for uh, everybody and uh, our services are saving uh, money and saving lives. It's a friendly atmosphere and friendly place for, for, for these people. It's a classical needle exchange program. You look at equipment, different type of needles and syringes. It's a cookers, insulin syringes, alcohol pads, citric for the cooking of heroin. Water, distillate water. And all, all this wouldn't be possible without Global Fund money? Yes. And uh, do you have any numbers, like how many people from your clients live with HIV and hepatitis? We don't have uh, any clients uh, with, with HIV. But uh, Zensa, it's a specific, uh, they have a specific uh, situation regarding uh, hepatitis C. It's the uh, lowest uh, uh, percent of uh, uh, hepatitis C in the whole country. Incidence of hepatitis C in population uh, injecting drug users uh, less than uh, 22%. In Sarajevo we have an incidence more than 40%. In Banja Luka we have incidence more than 60%. Do you think it would be possible without needle and syringe program? No, definitely. Uh, uh, we are started first, like uh, first program in, in, in the country from 2002. So you can very easily argue that there is an evidence that where in the cities where you introduced last year yes. in the Netherlands syringe program, you have low level in other cities. Absolutely. Have, how do you get salary? Where do you get salary from? <laughs> we, we don't have salary from uh, this moment. All staff uh, in Margina in uh, our three centers, Tuzla, Zenica and Mostar, working voluntary. So people work for free? Yes, absolutely. It's our mission. 
our first obligation to our client. In our organization, working voluntarily, working for society. It's a second side of our obligation. Dennis also explained that there are not only public health benefits of the program, but positive impact on public safety. When the program started, more than half of their clients were involved in criminal activities, and now their numbers are cut in half. They carried out a cost-effectiveness study which showed that they saved 2.5 million euros annually for the taxpayers. For uh, annually saving, every year uh, you'll be able uh, to uh, build new kindergarten or new school or whatever uh, for, for the society. The drop-in center has stored clean needles and other equipment enough for one year. After that, they will run out, but they have good chances for government support, because they are the only harm reduction service in Bosnia that has been accredited. Dennis said they have good cooperation with the police. However, a client at the center told us drug users do have problems with them. So if the police finds a syringe yes, in yes, the yes. pocket, then they, yes, yes. they take you, arrest you? Yes. Here in Zenica, first first beat you and then they ask you for name. Name of the dealers? No, 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 your names. The dealers after. He explained that he tried to stop using drugs several times, but has been unsuccessful. This drop-in center is the only place where he could get the proper syringes he needs. Do you think if, you, if there is no center here, then you would get infected with hepatitis? It's it's hundred percent. If if this program stop here in Bosnia, there will be an epidemic. Now he's prescribed a subscription drug called Suboxone, which can substitute the street heroin, so he doesn't have to engage in criminal activity to buy his drug. Clients like him are referred by NGO Margina to a local clinic to receive opiate substitution treatment, in addition to other therapeutic programs. The head of the center showed us around in the clinic. Our treatment is uh, not only OST. We have uh, individual and group psychotherapy, sociotherapy, socio rehabilitation treatment and uh, education treatment. And this is room for distribution of opiate substitution therapy, table for distribution therapy, and space for patients is here. It's methadone as juice. Service is financial, financial free. No cost for any kind of treatments. Unlike needle and syringe programs, the funding for opiate substitution programs seem to be secured for the near future. Not only in Zenica, but also in Sarajevo, where a brand new clinic provides substitution treatment. To je najveći broj od od svih ukupnom broju ovisnika u substitucijskim programima u Bosni i Hercegovini kojih ima oko 1100 između 1100 i 1200 u cijeloj Bosni i Hercegovini. Sada imamo izvanredne uslove za rad, imamo sve oblike tretmana od hospitalnog tretmana, odnosno detoks programa, kako za ovisnike o heroinu, znači postupnu detoksikaciju, tako smo otvorili odjel za tretman akutnih alkoholnih stanja za alkoholi, za one koji uzmaju alkohol. Do you have patients with hepatitis? Yes, of course. If you have, they can get treatment here or how do you solve that? They can get treatment in infective clinic and clinic for hepatology and we have cooperation with them. Još bi rekla da mi veoma želimo što Global Fond završava svoj program, ali imamo obećanje da će oni biti partneri u naredne četiri godine sa našim lokalnim zdravstvenim i političkim vlastima u održavanju tog programa uz pomoć domaćih sredstava, a uz njihovu tehničku podršku. Tako da mislimo da će ovi programi ipak nastaviti da žive i u budućnosti. The primary recipient of the Global Fund grants in Bosnia-Herzegovina was the local office of the United Nations Development Program. 
They distributed the funds to the harm reduction NGOs in the past decade and they are pleased with the results. The estimated injection, uh, injection drug user in Bosnia and Herzegovina is uh, 12,500. Uh, 12, we actually reached, uh, by the end of December, and the pro project, a, uh, more than 8,000 people. So uh, we uh, distributed more than uh, 2 million needles and syringes within the program. We are quite uh, happy and uh, quite satisfied with the results of this decade. So altogether, $40 million entered this country in the last decade, which resulted with the fact that we have the lowest prevalence of HIV in the region. It is three times less than in Montenegro and four times less than in Croatia and Serbia, number of HIV positive on 100,000 citizens. We strongly believe that uh, therapeutic centers by themselves are necessary and working good job, but without outreach, I'm afraid that uh, we will not have an uh, inflow of these populations towards the institutions which could offer uh, opiate treatment. Now we are coming to a period when the country should take over responsibility. Sredan Kukoy, president of an NG HIV prevention NGO based in Banja Luka, pointed out that the sophisticated political system of Bosnia and Herzegovina is a real challenge because it is hard to identify and reach officials who are responsible and also because the government officials are frequently changing so they have to start explaining everything all over again. Many people from the Global Fund are talking about the sustainable transition to domestic funds Mm -hmm. But does it really happen? Is it, is it really a sustainable transition, what we see now in Bosnia and in Albania and other countries? It's not really going on. It's hard to explain that something that you had for 10 years, it will be stopped in one minute. You know? I think that the hundreds, maybe thousands of people will gonna stay on the street without our support. What do you think, what will be the consequence if these programs close down? Looking at the, uh, other countries, we can expect, you know, the, that the number of new HIV cases among injected drug users will going to increase. Samir thinks NGOs working in the field should do more to make their voices heard by the general society and find supporters for the cause of harm reduction, which should be framed not only as a health problem, but a broader social issue. I think we still have some, uh, some space or some time to act properly. It's, we, we are not uh, losing the, the, the battle at, at this moment. So if, if funding would be available, you would uh, start again a uh, drop-in center? Of course. I would be the most happiest person in the world if we could continue 